Okay, let's address the elephant in the room here. It's 2 a.m. on a Saturday night. I just got back from a sold out show playing for 500 people. And yes, it was a Halloween theme, hence the orange jumpsuit. <laughs> Or maybe it's not a costume and I'm wanted in over 30 countries for my illegally high student success rate, we'll never know. But given the topic of this video, which is how to get your emails out of the promotions tab and double your sales with these simple cheat codes, I think the jumpsuit is fitting given the promo tab is basically just jail for your emails. That's segue though. Can you guys take me out of these cuffs now? And if you send emails for yourself or for your clients, you can use this simple Gmail hack to make twice as much money from your list every single month. And if you're an email copywriter looking to sharpen your skills and increase your value so you can charge more, let me tell you, if you know this trick and you're able to instantly double someone's email revenue, believe me, you can charge a lot for that. Are you serious? In fact, I have friends who charge over $10,000 or more just to implement this simple trick. And it takes them like one hour, right? Talk about easy money. And the client is more than happy to pay that because they're now making tens of thousands of extra dollars every single month. Because with just this one change, your open rates should go from about 10 to 12% to 20% or more. Call it double for simplicity's sake. And it stands to reason that if you double the number of opens, you double the number of clicks. And so you double the number of sales. Now, there's a lot of mystery surrounding email deliverability and what affects where your emails go. Most people, frankly, have no idea what the fuck they're talking about and I don't blame them. Gmail, just like the algorithms of social media platforms, don't tell you this stuff. They don't tell you how they work. They don't really want you to know because then marketers could work around it and then that would kind of defeat the whole purpose. So to most people, it's like playing a game where you don't even know the fucking rules. Like playing Minesweeper blindfolded. So my goal with this video is to demystify the wild west of email deliverability and explain it in a simple, easy to digest way that anyone can understand. So if you're new to this, all I mean when I say deliverability is where does your emails go after you hit send. You can think of this as the algorithm or the Harry Potter sorting hat of email. We wanna be in Gryffindor, not Slytherin. Unless you're a bad motherfucker like me, in which case, hey, you do you. But your deliverability really can make or break your results with email. It is to be both feared and respected. And there are really only four places an email could go after you send it. The best case is your emails are hand delivered into the primary box on a silver platter and put right in front of everyone's eyes to enjoy, rewarding you with an open rate of 20% or above. My averages are about 35 to 40% just for context. The typical case is your emails wind up in the dreaded promotions tab, which only about half of subscribers really check. Let's be honest, how often do you check the emails that are in your promotions tab? Nope. So emails that are in here typically get a 10 to 12% open rate. Scenario number three is that your emails wind up in the barren wasteland of the spam folder, which let's be honest, no one checks ever. If your emails end up here, you're probably looking at under 5% open rates. But believe it or not, it does actually get worse. In some cases, if your DNS records are fucked up, it is possible that your emails could disappear entirely, just like B.O.B.'s rapping career, All right? Turns out the earth wasn't flat. Honest mistake, Bob. So you can see how depending on where you or your client's emails are currently landing, you can potentially double, triple, or even quadruple opens, clicks, and sales simply by just improving your deliverability. This became especially relevant in 2013 when Gmail introduced the promotions tab designed specifically for marketing and sales emails like the type of emails that you and me are sending. And after Gmail, many other clients like Yahoo, Hotmail, Outlook, etc., followed suit. Hotmail, does anyone fucking use Hotmail anymore? Now I place extra emphasis on Gmail because Gmail makes up nearly half of the email client market share as of late 2023. This is why you may have heard many marketers and gurus preaching, declaring that email is dead, email is dying, because they got wrecked by the promo tab, right? There they were making millions of dollars. It was a lovely, bright, sunny day. And then bam, Gmail comes along, cuts their open rates in half overnight. But hey, not you and me. We're better than that, all right? You're watching this video, so you're clearly very intelligent and you have excellent bone structure. All right then, Sean, so if this promo tab thing is such a big deal, then how do I avoid it? Excellent question. And to answer that, we need to ask what actually affects email deliverability? And having sent over 10 million emails to my own list over the last five years, and having seen the results firsthand, having personally netted well over 
million dollars in sales from my email, I have a decent amount of data to back up my claims. Now, of course, a million bucks from email is nothing compared to some companies like Agora who make a million dollars a day with their emails, but Agora doesn't make videos like this, so I'm all you got. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But hey, credit where credit is due. I've learned a ton about email deliverability from the email king, Joel Marion. If you don't know Joel, he was a high school PE teacher who launched a supplement brand, Biotrust, and went from zero to $100 million company in one year. Pretty much all with email marketing. He's now worth over half a billion dollars, so the dude knows a thing or two about emails. And all of this has taught me that there are four main components that affect email deliverability. Most people only know about the first one. And hell, most people sending emails don't even know about the first one. No wonder their shit's all fucked up. So number one out of four is drum roll. <gasps> the content of your email itself, right? Not exactly groundbreaking, but you'd be surprised how many people overlook this. Now, when I say the content of your email, this includes everything from the subject line to the from name, images, you wanna keep them less than 600 pixels in width, pro tip, links, both the link itself and the hyperlinked text, and of course your body copy. Now, the general rule here is if it looks like a promotional flyer, then it's probably going to promotions, right? And if it looks like an email from a friend, then it's probably gonna reach your primary inbox. That is why all the emails in your promotions folder look the same. They all look like junk mail. They have tons of fancy graphics and logos and pictures and links to different products. They reek of promotion, right? No surprise that they end up there. It's kind of ironic that the more effort people put into designing fancy emails, the worse they perform because no one sees them because they're in the promotions tab. So that's number one. Now, the second thing that affects your email deliverability is gonna be your domain reputation, also called your sender reputation. So you can think of this as kind of like your track record of sending emails. So if you've been a good, clean email sender, you've been a good boy, right? Implementing good list hygiene and shocking sending emails that people actually want to read so they open them and you maintain high open rates, then the Gmail sorting hat goes, huh, you know what? I guess people want to hear from this person. And so they put them in primary. And on the contrary, if all your emails are just hard selling or they're just boring as batshit and people aren't opening and reading, then Gmail goes, you know what? This dude's emails low key stink, right? I'm gonna put him over in this promotions tab with the rest of these boring corporate brands and their promotional flyers. Understand the number one thing that email clients like Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, and Hotmail look at and care about is your past open rates, right? Are people opening your emails? And in addition, any other forms of positive engagement will help your reputation. So clicks, replies, forwards, whitelist, saves, all that good stuff. And on the flip, any negative interactions will obviously hurt your reputation as well. So people not opening, deleting before they read, unsubscribing, marking a spam, blocking you, dragging your email into the promo tab, so on and so forth. Now, remember, this is domain wide. So anything at seanferris.com is all under the same umbrella. So that's number two. Now, the third thing that affects email deliverability is your IP reputation. Now, this is the reputation of your entire ESP. For example, if you use ActiveCampaign like me, then it's gonna be every person using ActiveCampaign who's on that same shared IP. So understand when you send emails, they're bundled in with everyone else's emails on something called a shared IP address. Think of this as kind of like a school bus, right? You're packed on there with dozens of other sweaty, smelly kids. The bus leaves from one place with everyone on it, and then everyone gets off at their own stop as you go aka the inbox of their recipients. Now, depending on the other people's sending practices, this IP could either drag you up or down. Kind of like that one Nazi teacher who gave everyone detention because that one fuckwit kid Jimmy didn't do his homework. Great job, Jimmy. You fucked it for everyone. I hope you're happy. <laughs> or maybe you went to a super smart school where everyone was really helpful and supportive and raised each other up, in which case that would bring up the overall reputation of the entire school, AKA everyone sending emails from that IP. Now, in actual practice, this won't make that much of a difference if you choose a well-known and reputable ESP like Active Campaign. okay? The other three factors are much more important in my opinion. Now, if you have a huge list and you're sending a minimum of 100,000 emails a day, you can ask your ESP for a dedicated IP so you're not lumped in with all the other scrubs. 
Don't do this with a small list though, or it will destroy your deliverability. So that's number three. And last, but certainly not least, the fourth factor that affects your email deliverability is gonna be your authentication records, meaning your SPF, DKIM, and DMARC records. Now, this can get very complicated, but I'm gonna try and keep it simple, right? These are essentially authentication methods that help prevent spammers and scammers from sending emails under someone else's name, kind of like a fake impersonator account on Instagram. So you can kind of think of these as like bouncers at a club or like an Instagram blue check to confirm that you are who you say you are. And as you can imagine, without these, anyone would be able to impersonate anyone else and email would be a terrible experience. So if one or more of these records fail, your emails may go to spam or even disappear entirely. And scammers may be able to impersonate you and scam people under your name, which if you have a shred of ethics, you probably don't want that. Like I said, these records are a bit technical and complicated, and they also don't really have any impact on if your emails go to promotions or not. So I'll explain those in the next video when we talk about how to get out of spam. One thing at a time. All right, for now, just think of SPF as the door girl with the guest list, DKIM as the bouncer checking ID, and then DMARC as the club manager who gets to decide if that wasted white chick gets in. She's so drunk she can barely walk straight, so he really should be responsible and not let her in, but she's also fine as hell, so a corrupt club manager may just let her in anyway. Allah, uh, I'll just explain that in the next video when we talk about spam, all right? So now you know why your emails are landing in promo, let's talk about how to get out of it. If we know what's causing your emails to land in the promotions tab, then we can reverse engineer this process to ensure that our emails land in primary. So the number one guiding principle for this is to use email how email was originally intended to be used, right? Which is to send personal emails to friends, it wasn't built to send thousands of sales emails at a time. So this means, right, plain text emails with no fancy logos and graphics, it's not full of salesy language, it feels like it's written personally to a friend, and you wouldn't keep emailing people who aren't opening your emails. Again, if it looks like junk mail, then it is junk mail. And again, if you write emails that people actually want to open and read, and you're implementing good list hygiene, meaning you're cleaning people off the list who aren't opening your emails, then you'll likely land in primary without having to do anything. Which is why I've never bothered to make a video like this, because if you follow good sending practices, you won't need this stuff. But assuming that you're doing all of the above and you're still hitting promo, then you'll definitely want to try this trick out. Ah, so. Let's get to the good stuff. The number one email deliverability secret that almost no one knows, and again, credit to Joel Marion for this, is you do not hit the promo tab by having promotional language in your email, but by having a high percentage of promotional language. So knowing this, we have essentially two options. Number one, remove the promotional language, or number two, make the emails longer because 10 promotional words in a 100 word email is 10% of the whole email, but 10 promotional words in a thousand word email is only 1%. Now there's no hard and fast rule around this because obviously if Gmail made that number public, then every marketer would know to stay below 3% and I won't go to promo, which would again defeat the whole purpose of them making the promo tab. Instead, they save it for people like me to test 10 million emails over the course of five years, figure the shit out for myself, and then share my findings with you in an extremely condensed YouTube video. Video. So if that's not worthy of a like and subscribe, then I don't know what is. I'll rescue a puppy in my next video or something. Back to the topic. So the problem with removing promotional language is that obviously sales suffer. We need that language in there to persuade people to take an action like clicking and buying. And the other problem is that often you don't actually know which words are salesy without removing and testing every single word one at a time, which trust me is an extreme pain in the ass. I've had the most random trigger words like lucrative, free, C19, happy Easter, secret file, masterclass, responsible for causing my entire email to go to the promotions tab. Like no one would predict that saying happy Easter in your email would send you to the promo tab. 
And that's the problem with trying to cut out these words is that a lot of the time you don't know what the words are. So then on the other hand, the problem with making the email longer is that again, sales will suffer because if the email is super long, then no one's going to read it. Even if it is really good, right? Remember, most people check their emails on their phone when they're on the toilet, in the bus. So you have to be a world class copywriter to get someone to read a 2000 word email. And of course, it's much more effort to write a 2000 email compared to a 200 word email for really zero extra benefit. In fact, probably even negative benefit. You're actually hurting your results with 10 times more effort. This leaves us in quite a tricky situation, right? Like being locked in a cage with a hungry tiger and a pack of hyenas. Do I want to die by a tiger or die by a hyena? Well, luckily for you, because you're watching this video, there is a workaround. So the solution to this great dilemma is that we are going to add extra words, but outside of the main email body so they don't feel like extra words. That's the key. Now, back in the good old days, we used to be able to do this by stuffing paragraphs of invisible size one white font at the bottom of emails, but ESPs and email clients started to catch on and started banning people for doing this, sending them to spam because yeah, Google is a trillion dollar tech company. They're not exactly stupid. So we need to get a little bit more creative. Imagination. Now, we all know the top of the email is critical for grabbing attention and getting people to read the next line. So we can't just stuff paragraphs of text at the top of the email either. So that really leaves us with two main places that we can add that extra text without hurting sales. Number one, the PS, and number two, the footer. Or if you're in America, the footer. Footer, footer, whatever. Now for the PS, there is a very clever way we can both make extra sales and also improve deliverability at the same time. Credit to marketing Don Dean Jackson for this idea because it is genius. He calls it the super signature and it basically just says, hey, whenever you're ready, here are four ways that I can help you grow your business. Number one, get my free book, blah, blah, blah. Number two, join my free Facebook group, blah, blah, blah. Number three, join my mastermind, blah, blah, blah. Or number four, work with me one-on-one -on -one to help you with your blah, blah, blah goals. And then it goes into detail about each of those four things. Now, this whole thing is quite long. Right? It's around 200 words, which if your original email was just 200 words, then you've now doubled the length of your entire email. So now maybe your promotional language percentage drops from 10% to just 5%. And that might be enough to get you out of the promo tab while also making extra sales. Pretty cool. But if not, there is one more place that you can get away with stuffing hundreds of words of text. And that is the email footer. And if you've ever seen some emails that have really long footers at the bottom with tons of small text, this may well be why. So some things that we could put in the footer, a disclaimer about us, a founder blurb or story, privacy policy, refund policy, a long ass unsubscribe spiel like mine, where I say, hey, if you wanna be mediocre and miserable for the rest of your life, blah, 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 then click here to unsubscribe. You could have a super long list description, like, hey, you subscribe to my list because you signed up for my free cheat sheet, which covers blah, 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 so you should read it because it's gonna make you tons of money. I'm kidding, don't say that. Okay, the point remember is to use non-promotional language or you're just digging yourself a deeper hole by adding more promotional words. So test a bunch of stuff, have fun and get creative with it. All right, now the key here is the text has to be nice and small, but still readable. And gray is okay, but don't make it white. Don't make it the same as the background color or the spam filters will pick up on that. And then you'll have a problem worse than promotions. You'll be in the black hole of email marketing, AKA the spam folder. We definitely don't want that. That's like trading a Toyota Prius for a bicycle. But once you've figured out what works, so it will take quite a lot of testing to find a combination of words that works for you to get every email out of the promo tab. But the good news is you only have to figure this out once because once you figured it out, you can save that as a template and then use that for every single email moving forward. <sighs> so I threw a lot at you in this video. On the off chance you are still watching this and you haven't clicked off this to go watch a Mr. Beast video or something, then that tells me quite a lot about you. You're probably gonna be really successful. So let's recap. Here is how to get out of the promo tab in seven simple steps. Step one is you wanna set up two test accounts. Okay, these are gonna be free Gmail accounts. One of them is gonna be an active account and one inactive. Okay, so your active one, you're gonna use it to open and read emails, check records. When you send yourself a text email, you know, make sure the links work, make sure it's formatted correctly, all that sort of stuff. And the second one is gonna be your inactive one where you don't open any emails with it ever. 
And this way it's completely unbiased because you have to remember that just because an email went to my promo tab doesn't mean it went to your promo tab. If you open all of my emails, then my emails are likely to end up in your primary tab, but that doesn't mean it's gonna end up in everyone's primary tab. So that's why your inactive test account where you don't open any emails is completely unbiased. And then, you know, Gmail's not just gonna put it in your primary tab because you have a history of opening all the emails from that person. Also, make sure you turn off conversation view or your emails are gonna stack on top of each other and it's gonna get super confusing. So that's step one. Step two, send a test email to yourself to both test accounts to see where they land, to see if you even have a problem in the first place. And if you do, then step three, check your domain with Google Postmaster. So Google Postmaster, completely free tool, which is gonna help you diagnose why your emails might be hitting promo. So if it is hitting promo in that inactive test account, then it's likely to be one of the first two factors that I mentioned earlier, either the email content itself or your domain reputation. And you can visit Google Postmaster, go to postmaster.google.com to check your domain reputation, your IP reputation, and your spam rate. Ideally, you want both of those to be high and your spam rate to be under 0.1%. Just note that you will need to have DMARC set up in order to view this data. If you don't know how to do that, Google it. Google is free, use it. Step number four, remove inactive subscribers, all right? What you're gonna wanna do now is segment your list and remove anyone who hasn't opened an email in 60 days, if you're sending daily, otherwise 90 days is fine, to a new list. You're gonna go full Patrick star on them, all right, and just simply move them from here to over here. We should take Bikini Bottom and push it somewhere else. This new list is gonna be called inactive and you're gonna put all the non-openers on that list. And if you haven't already, you're definitely gonna to wanna to set up a list cleaner automation, which will do this for all new subscribers so you don't have to manually do it all the time. And often with just these simple changes, you'll probably see that your promo tab problem may well fix itself over time as your domain reputation improves by one, sending quality emails that people actually wanna read, two, implementing good list hygiene, and three, not sending to inactive subscribers. So that's step four. Step five, Fix your email content. Reword any content that you think might be salesy or promotional sounding only if you can do so without watering your copy down and making it less effective. And then test it again, send it to your test account to see if it still goes to promo or if it's now hitting primary. For instance, you could take a link which says, click here to take advantage of this crazy discount and you could reword it to say something like, see why top athletes and CEOs are rushing inside to grab their copy. It hits just as hard, but it doesn't use promotional sounding language to do so. If that still doesn't work, then step six, add a super signature or build your footer block. You wanna add about a hundred words at a time. All right, we want the minimum effective dose that will get us into the primary inbox. No need to add 2000 words if we don't have to. Keep adding words, keep testing until your email goes to primary for that inactive test account. And once you do manage to finally hit primary, save this email as a template and use it every single time until your domain reputation is high and you will no longer need it. Well, Sean, if this extra text hack works so well, then why don't you use a super signature or this extra text in your footer? The answer is very simple. It goes back to the three main points I've been making throughout this entire video. It's because I send emails that people actually want to open and read. And I also purge inactive subscribers from my list. Because of that, it means my open rates are super high, my domain reputation is then super high, and I don't need any of these fancy tricks. Which is why I've repeated four times in this video, start with the basics, get your basics right, and you won't need this extra fancy stuff. So that's step seven, save it as a template, right? And because now your emails will all start going to the primary tab, your open rates will be consistently high, over 20% as a minimum, which will fix your domain reputation. And congratulations, you are now free from the dreaded promo tab jail. You have the ultimate money-making superpower and can immediately get anyone a near double increase in opens, clicks, and sales with this trick. If you or your client has a list, they'll be making so much more money from it. And if you're an email copywriter, you can now charge easily an extra thousand dollars a month or more because you're now making your clients a metric fuck ton, yes, that is a real measurement, more money. So you go make yourself some more money. I am gonna go take myself to bed because it is three in the morning. If you appreciate the fact that I literally just got back from a gig and decided to make this video for you instead of going to sleep, then uh, maybe subscribe to some shit 
and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.